<laughs> All right, we are live, everyone. So right now, everyone watching, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Eva Chen, and you are watching a CC Cream tutorial. So there has been so much mystery around CC Creams, and we've assembled an amazing group of experts from Max Factor, one of the top bloggers in England, to kind of demystify CC Cream. So let's go through and kind of everyone introduce yourselves, please. Shall I start? Yeah, don't be shy. Just turn on in. Okay. Hello, I'm I'm Bree, and I write the beauty and style blog Bree.com, like a personal blog about beauty and my everyday style. Me. Hi, my name is Caroline Barnes. I've been a makeup artist for the past 20 years and I've been working with Max Factor for the past five. Amazing. Hi, I'm Vicky. I manage Max Factor's Facebook and Twitter pages. Great. Okay, so we have a good group of people here and I know that we've got a lot of questions coming about CC creams. So first of all, um, I would just love everyone to bring their takes on CC cream. Caroline, you're the expert makeup artist. What is a CC cream exactly? Uh, so a CC cream basically means a cosmetic corrector. So it's kind of like the new generation of BB creams. In Max Factor's case, because in every different case it's slightly different, each brand is having a different take on it, but in Max Factor's case you get a better amount of coverage. The finish is still really natural, very easy to apply, wonderful goodies in the product for your skin, like rosehip, sea buckthorn, jojoba oil, glycerin, lovely hydration products, products that really kind of care and desensitize a stressed or irritated skin. But the effect again is very, very natural. And in particular for this product, what I've noticed and the feedback that I've got is that women who don't like the texture of a foundation, there's a lot of women out there who don't wear any foundation on their skin because they just, they feel a bit claustrophobic with it over their skin. And uh, this product is very, very lightweight. So the biggest feedback, I think, is that people feel that it's very, very light and airy, so it doesn't feel like a foundation or a tinted moisturizer at all on their skin. So that's really refreshing. So would you say that it uh, gives kind of like a no makeup makeup look then, or kind of is it? Uh, no, this more? no, this definitely gives great coverage. Um, it's mm -hmm. not it's not a medium to heavy coverage. But it's a very natural coverage. The wonder of this product is that it does build and layer very well. So I would always use my hands for a product and a finish like this, just simply because of the warmth of your hands really helps the product connect well into all the corners of your face. It's much easier to get a great connectivity between the product and your skin. Then if you have like slight redness on your cheeks or you're tired under your eyes, you can build and build the product up and it gives you the amount of coverage. I would never use an extra foundation, which is a question that I've been asked in terms of CC creams over this. If I had a skin problem where I needed much heavier coverage, then I would use an opaque concealer to perfect those areas. But at least when you use a CC cream all over your face, the effect is very healthy, very natural, but it doesn't read as makeup. You know, you don't have like a, a pearly finish to it or a golden finish to it. It just looks like beautiful, taking care of skin. Well, that sounds kind of really amazing. I think everyone is beautiful, <laughs> taking care of skin. Have I sold it? <laughs> <laughs> I literally just started using CC cream recently. Actually, the last time I was in London, I got to try this product from Max Factor because Max Factor isn't available in the U.S. anymore, which is kind of heartbreaking to me. Um, I use the two-in-one foundation plus serum, so I love this product, but it is a color coverage product, right? It's a what product? Sorry, Eva. Color coverage product. Uh, yeah, the coverage, the cover for the elixir, yeah, is much more of a foundation finish. Yeah, you get much more of a coverage payoff. Um, mm. And obviously that, you know, people need that as well. It's lovely to be able to choose. I mean, our CC cream for me is something that I would chuck on at the weekends before I go to the gym. And in fact, actually through work, I'm using CC creams much more than I thought I would. I thought it would be more for an everyday woman. But actually, if I'm working with artists that have just got, a red, just got off a red eye flight, their skin's really dehydrated, it's perfect for them. Um, also doing a beauty shoot at work if I'm doing like, you know, six or seven different looks using uh, the poor model skin by look four is starting to get a bit irritated but the CC creams because they're just a little bit more nurturing 
Um, yeah, it's paid off really well. I've actually been quite surprised that I've used it more in my professional kit than I thought I would. Great. 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 So the next question I have is for you, Ree. So I feel like I did start hearing about CC from European, European brands originally. What would you say about, have you heard a lot of chatter about CC? What have you, what have you heard yourself personally? Well, um, I didn't get all of that, but for me, I, I think I first started hearing about CC creams probably about a year ago now, and um, it was when I was still trying to get my head around the whole BB thing, really, and I was trying out lots of BB cream, so I don't think I was quite ready for the whole CC thing to come and start kick straight in, but obviously, you know, that's been a whole year now, and I think the problem is that there are loads and loads of questions about how and when and why and what the difference is between CCs and BBs and people are really, really confused. So, I mean, I think you don't have to make a decision necessarily, but I think it's all about kind of, you know, w working out how you want your skin to look. And some people will never want it. They will want a full coverage foundation all the time. But for me, I love, I love the whole CC cream thing because I always need extra hydration. I want, I want that kind of blurry, look that kind of hides any kind of imperfections which I think is what you get with a CC cream because once you're like if my skin's dehydrated my pores are open literally trying to just grab moisture from anywhere in the, in the environment so I feel like if, it's, if I've got something that's really hydrating on my skin it stays looking more flawless and that's what we all want isn't it like a flawless um, skin look really I think that's the basis of everything we're all obsessed which is why everybody wants to know about CC we just yeah. And it. Now I see that you have a pretty awesome lipstick on with what I assume is your CC cream. So do you tend to wear lip color with your CC then? Yeah, I think what I like to do is put the CC on and you get that, that kind of like soft dewy finish, then cream blush and a, a little bit of lip color and then you've got, you've got a makeup look but you kind of look like you just, all you did was put a bit of cream blush on and some lipstick and that you're just naturally perfect, I think which is what I'm always pretending to be. I think that's what, and I also think of that of a very like English look actually, the kind of English, it's like perfectly undone, but super perfect at the same time. That's what I always think about. So um, we actually had Dr. Sarah Vickery just join us. Sarah, are you there? I know we had some technical difficulties. Yes, I see you. Can you hear us okay? I think you might be on mute. Um, do you want to try unmuting your microphone? Or it's on the upper right corner. It is the microphone icon, as expected. Got it. Yay. OK, cool. Yay. Yes, we can do this perfectly. So can you introduce yourself and tell us a bit about what you do? And then you are basically my technical expert on CC things. You're going to demystify it all for us from your point of view. So introduce yourself and then tell us a little bit about CC cream from your point of view. Okay, um, I'm Dr. Sarah Vickery. I'm a principal scientist for uh, Max Factor. And when it comes to CC creams, I think they really have been designed for women who want that multitasking, all-in-one benefit that they get from a BB cream, but with more intense color correction. So they really, from a technical standpoint, focus on complexion. And that's both through ingredients that um, are designed from a skincare standpoint to work on complexion issues like dull skin or uneven skin tone, and then a more advanced natural and adaptable coverage from a cosmetic standpoint. So how exactly did you make the CC cream? How did you go about formulating it? Were there certain qualities in the CC cream you knew you really wanted? Yeah, so um, Max Factor has always been an innovator in foundations. And um, we know that there's a consumer desire to really have these multitasking products that blur the lines between cosmetics and skincare. Um, so we've been working for years with our skincare partners to create those products. Uh, two years ago, we created a product that was a CC cream and all but name, in that it creates flawless, even lightweight coverage um, and provides hydration and um, as well as all sorts of other hydrating skin benefits to the to the skin through a cocktail of skincare ingredients. Now we're delighted that there is a new ingredient category called CC creams that allows women who want this benefit to easily find it at the Max Factor Hatch. That's Great. And then I know that, you know, BB creams originally came from Germany, but sort of, but then really became popular in Korea. 
and CC cream came from Asia as well. Where do you get your inspiration for new products? Is it are you always looking eastward, or are you kind of finding it everywhere all around? We find inspiration everywhere, but we'll start continue to look to the east. Um, Asia is really an incubator of future beauty trends and um, Eastern women consumers are really into beauty. They expect the utmost in quality and performance for their products. So if a, if a, a trend is really hot in the east it's just a matter of time before it's going to move west at least in some form. Um, and given how globalized our world has become that movement between east and west is happening faster than ever before. And then back to CC cream, sorry for the tangent. Tell me about CC creams in terms of skin types, because there's so many different kinds of skin types out there. And I know a lot of women, especially with oily skin and breakout prone women, are scared of foundation sometimes because they're worried it's going to make them break out. Do CC creams like each have different categories for different skin types, or is it kind of a one size fits all approach? I think you have to use the product. I think that it's the is... CC cream category. Oh, we can start with Sarah and then Caroline. I 100% want to hear. Um, like, I feel like you guys are going to have different perspectives on the same question. I think that the CC cream category will continue to grow, and you'll probably see skin type as a variant of that. I would argue that a really well formulated uh, CC cream isn't uh, overly greasy. That's one of the great benefits that it's more lightweight. Um, it provides the brightness to the skin, the hydration, as well as beautiful coverage, and that works for most any skin type. Okay, what do you think, Caroline? I think as, as an all-rounder, yes, but I think if you do have a problem with oil, my recommendation would be always to use oil-free products all the way through because it works initially, but it doesn't give you the longevity throughout the day. Okay. And then, Caroline, some more questions for you that some of our followers and readers had. When it comes to CC cream, is it something that people should wear day and night? Is there a foundation that they should be using instead in the evening if you need a fuller coverage look? Oh, you know, there is no rules in makeup. It's totally, you know, however you want to or choose to wear your makeup. You know, the thing is, if you're going to have a beautiful, fresh skin, you can match that with a smoky eye. You don't have to have a full coverage skin and a smoky eye and a red lip. You know, you can change the balance of your makeup. It's what you feel comfortable with. If you're blessed to have a beautiful skin, then yeah, you need to simply enhance it with a CC cream. But if you are a mere human and you need a little bit of help, then as it gets to later on in the day, you might want to opt for a full coverage. The one thing I must say about the CC cream in particular is it's very good at layering. Um, a lot of products you can't build up throughout the day. It tends to um, pull together and create um, like patches on the skin. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't smooth itself together, but when you reapply this, it works very, very well together and creates another layer. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then my other question was, sorry, I have so many questions, and I definitely want to open it up so we can have a discussion about it, but SPF, if you're someone who's sunphobic, I am like sunphobic, if I could hide under a rock, or if aerosols could come back in fashion, we would totally rock aerosol all the time. At what point do you put sunscreen on if you wanted a higher covered sunscreen? I would always put um, my highest sunscreen within my moisturizer. Definitely. I wouldn't ever, personally, I would never depend on my SPF through my foundation. I think it's a bonus, but essentially to have an SPF of 50 that doesn't give you a very kind of white grayish effect to your skin, you need to invest in a good skincare product to do that and then use your foundation. Okay, cool. So let's open it up. Vicky, I think you're there as well. I would love to know if any of the followers from Max Factor have any questions for the group here. Yeah, we've got a question from Twitter coming in, and I think this one might be best to answer for uh, Sarah. The question is, at which point does it stop being BB and CC cream and it's just foundation? Yeah, it's an excellent question. Foundations really focus more, typical foundations, on um, coverage and color and on finish. So uh, coverage can range from really lightweight to full and finish from very dewy to very matte um, with all sorts of different product forms to deliver that. Uh, CC creams and BB creams are more of a hybrid between the skincare that delivers the skin benefit as well as a bit of color correction. So um, the, the continuum would be from BB to CC and then to full coverage foundation. Got it. 
Great, and uh, we've got another question from Facebook, and I think we've talked about that a little bit. So, um, is it suitable for oily skin, or is it just for oily skin? What's the ideal skin type for the CC cream? Well, I think we did discuss that earlier before. I think it works across the board. Um, I, I personally wouldn't recommend it if you have an oil condition with your skin. If your if your skin is very oily, I would avoid. Um, I would use something that was specific for your skin type. And I have a question actually in terms of transitioning makeup in general. CC creams I'm sure play into it, but more like, Marilyn, in your opinion, in terms of transitioning between seasons, it's kind of weird in New York right now because it's 80 degrees yesterday, today is 50 degrees, and tomorrow is going to be 30 degrees. So when we go from different weather, breaks in weather, how do you recommend people take care of their skin in that kind of condition? Well, I'll just keep butting in. <laughs> I think it's just all about hydration, isn't it, on your skin. You know when your skin looks older than it should do because your hydration levels are lower and your skin looks less plump. So when it is a dry, dry time, and especially over here, it's very dry. I've got very little sunlight at the moment. You need as much hydration as you can get from your moisturizers or your CC creams. And I think that's where they really benefit. When you go into a hotter, warmer climate, you tend less to need products like that. You have to do it every the thing is it's such a personal thing everyone has a different skin type everyone has a different need everyone has a different style so there isn't a set rule or a set answer which makes it very, very tricky you just have to know what's out there and have the knowledge to be able to select the right product for you mm -hmm. great and um, I want to open this question up for everyone um, and everyone out there I want to hear what I've got another question from me actually oh okay great coming in um, I was just wondering if a lot of her blog followers have been asking her about CC creams already. Is there quite a buzz out there? Oh yes, definitely. I, I think people are really, really interested to know about what they can get from a CC cream. And obviously, because it, it sounds pretty whizzy, doesn't it? I mean, like, you know, we've gone from BB to CC and then it's like, what's next kind of thing. So, yeah, I mean, definitely a big buzz. And I, the, the shame of it is that people don't really understand them, but I think we get, we'll get there with that quite slowly, really, the fact that there's so many different ways you can use them. Particularly the, the Max Factor one is very much more like a foundation, but still with the kind of light, flawless look, whereas some others could be used more as a primer because they don't offer as much coverage, which is why I particularly like the Max Factor one, to be fair, because um, you get that flawless finish without the feel of makeup. So, and I think a lot of people are looking for that. So, yeah, it's been a really popular sort of kind of topic for, for readers in general. Yeah, I totally Can I just agree. add one more thing to that? Mm -hmm. No, go ahead. Sorry, I'll no, try to... Thank you. Um, I think also the, the kind of phenomenon of the BB and the CC cream has actually um, taught people more. It's kind of teaching women that these multitasking products are out there. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't necessarily know that you have those products within a tinted moisturizer or a foundation, but especially for the women that I work a lot with in the UK, sometimes they, oh, no, no, I'll just use a foundation for the evening, or, you know, maybe I'll, I'll push to a tinted moisturizer. Oh, it actually perfects my skin and it helps hydrate my skin. Oh, well, okay, then. Well, well, maybe I will try it, and maybe I'll even wear it in the day. So it's just encouraging, you know, women to just, I don't know, have a little splurge on themselves and enjoy, you know, using products that have these multitasking benefits. Agree, absolutely. And it's kind of fun to explore the whole science of makeup as well. And the fact that you can, you know, you can always experiment and mix different things with things that you wouldn't have thought you would. And it's, I think it's just pushing the boundaries and making us think a lot more kind of creatively about this amazing world of makeup. Everybody's so much happier than they would be without it. Yeah, I would agree as well because I feel like a long time, for a long time, for many, many years, when it came to kind of coverage on the skin, people felt like it was all or nothing. You either had to choose the foundation, which was people felt like they had a mask on their face, or it was nothing, and you had to go bare face, imperfections and all. So I think the great thing about CC cream, and I think I agree with you, Caroline, BB cream kind of paved the way, as well as you, Rhi. I think BB creams paved the way, tinted moisturizers paved the way, and prepared the audience and the consumers out there all 
for certain claims, which is a really unique category because you can't have that coverage in that kind of airbrushed look without having to slap on a lot of makeup and feel, as you said, suffocated. Because foundations, to me, I always feel like women, you don't have to wear foundation. You don't have to wear foundation. You think a lot of the time women think it's a rule that they have to wear a foundation. And if they don't, they're not like a woman somehow. So it's great that CC comes are a light alternative. No, it's true. I think there's something very grown up about foundations. And CC creams are a great, like, bridge product. I love being able to kind of, like, use this, like, as you said, get it off an airplane and feel, like, finished and polished, but not like I have to kind of sit in front of the mirror and apply foundation with a brush. Absolutely. So let's talk about so one of the things that was, this was my question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say one of the things that's, that's really unique about the Max Factor CC Cream is that it provides all that coverage without feeling at all greasy or lightweight because we pulled out a lot of those heavier ingredients like silicones that tend to wear really beautifully but feel heavy and greasy throughout the day and replace those with lighter ingredients like cucumber water, jojoba, sea buckthorn, um, and rose tip extracts. So you get the coverage um, that you would expect from something like a foundation, but it feels incredibly lightweight and airy uh, like a CC cream. Great. Cool. So my question that I, sorry, I keep like, getting distracted from, it's my fault. Um, would you guys each kind of go through and tell us your beauty edicts or your beauty rules or kind of any of your essential beauty tips that you've learned throughout the years? We, as an expert style blogger, like, are there any things that you always turn to in the beauty world or fashion world? So, so, so like a beauty kit. A beauty kit. <laughs> Sorry, Eva, I didn't hear you properly. I just heard beauty oh. tip. <laughs> I'm That's kind of me. making everyone, I'm putting everyone on the spot right now and forcing them to kind of reveal their top one or two beauty secrets or beauty tips or things they, they must do. Okay, for me, um, it's all about cleansing. I just think having like clean skin is just the, and also like an exfoliated skin is the absolute winner for any kind of beauty regime. Everything else works when you're skin is clear and I mean I'm not talking about, like, across all the skin types you know just having clear skin when you find the right cleanser for you and I mean I triple cleanse it's like ridiculous I'm obsessed so but then but, but I, you generally kind of get, the more you work your skin the more sort of circulation is running through your skin you just feel alive your skin's fresher and it's ready to take all the products that you want to put on it so you know like serums and pre-serums and oils and all of the other jazz that goes on. So, yeah, I think cleansing for me is like the main obsession. Okay, and you're all, you just walked us through like seven different steps. I know. I think everyone's ears kind of perked up. Everyone was like, what? Wow. That's about every step of your skincare. <laughs> I'm fascinated. Yeah, well, it's an obsession. <laughs> so, but seriously, take us through every step. It's like, you cleanse obsessively. Yeah, so serum you said? Yeah, I do. I so I do like a pre cleanse, and then like a cream. Sometimes I get the the gadget out, so cleansing brush, and then it will be like an oil, then maybe a serum, moisturizer, and then sometimes like an overnight mask on top of that. What time do you go to bed? <laughs> oh my God, everyone is asleep in my house by the time I get into bed. Oh, it God. takes forever. <laughs> you, I literally just counted between seven and nine steps, so that's really, really impressive. And do you do, you do the same amount for your hair? Because your hair looks amazing. Oh, thank you. Um, I, do, I don't wash my hair very often. I only wash it about once or twice a week. But when I do, it's a really lengthy process of layering on the products as well, because I do a lot of heat styling, so I really put my hair through the mill, so I, I try and pay it back nicely when I do wash it. So that's that's so my So you're obsessed with cleansing your face, but not obsessed with cleansing your hair. No. I like that. Balance that out somehow. Yeah, that's the grungy part. Exactly. Grunge is cool right now, totally. Yeah. So, Caroline, okay, so you spend your days doing makeup on lots of other people, celebrities to real women. I would love to hear your personal tips that you use yourself, the secrets you always go back to. 
Um, for me, it's the secrets of um, salicylic acid and glycolic for exfoliation and eyebrows. I'm allowed two. Can I have two? I just think it's all about simple grooming. If you cut, firstly, going back to exfoliation and the products that I use, um, I would never use a granule on my skin. I hate the way that granules look, they deaden the, the skin. Um, I like, there's no point in expending money on an expensive moisturizer or any moisture to that fact if you have a very dry skin. You need to get rid of all the dead skin, the dead cells off, your, off the surface of your skin in order for everything else to look good. So if your skin doesn't look good, your foundation, your blush and your powder will not be doing any benefit to you at all. And second basic is eyebrows. Not having your eyebrows shaped perfectly for your face is like going out without ironing your clothes. Not that I actually iron my clothes, I hang them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But um, it's a really important stru big structure of your face that makes a big difference to your eyes. It frames your eyes. It can make or break um, the difference in looking groomed and glamorous to looking scruffy and um, a little bit unkempt. And for me, if you have a good brow, you can carry anything off. Mm -hmm. When it comes to eyebrows, do you tend to use powders, pencils? How do you fill in the brow? Again, it depends on the skin type. Again, if you've got a very oily skin, you want to tend to use a powder because it's going to hold fast. Um, a cold pencil will slide a little bit on an oily skin. Um, again, you might want to use a cold pencil and set it if you want a very heavy look. You can also use these lovely eyebrow tints as well that you can tint very, very fine hair-like strokes. The most important thing, whether you're, you, whatever texture you decide to go for, is to groom and groom and groom them through. So the actual product is very, very buffed and isn't heavy. I'm not one for a very heavy, strong brow because it completely overpowers the eye. You have to make the balance between your eye and the brow to make sure that your eye is much, much stronger. Otherwise, when someone looks at you, they're actually drawn to your eyebrow, which is the wrong way. They need to be drawn right to your pupil. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And when you say groom and groom and groom, and you said that's the most important thing. Sorry, yes. So you want to use a clarification. Tell me what that means because now I'm sorry. paranoid about my eyebrows. Yeah. You'll find that a lot of products, just like the Max Factor product, um, has a little brush on the lid. And so when you've applied the cold pencil or you've applied the powder, you want to make sure that you just run a brush through your brows so you break up the solid shape. Breaking up the solid shape will soften the eyebrow. You'll still get the density for the shape, but it won't be a dense, opaque finish. And that's when it gets, goes too far to the side of heavy. Um, mm. You don't want anything that's a graphic shape. You want something that blends nicely behind your actual hairs. Obviously, it depends on you know, how light your hair is, how fine or dense your eyebrows are. There's always a balance. But um, yeah, that would be my biggest tip to make sure. And, you know, it's very hard to see yourself sometimes. Sometimes we have facial blindness and we look in the mirror and we can't see whether it's or your brows should be, you know, thinner or thicker or follow this trend or, you know, bleached or, or blacker. So just go and see, you know, there's so many places you can go now to get your brows done. Just go and see, you know, a couple of opinions of different professionals just to get the right advice. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Start with a pro, I guess. And Speaking of pros, Dr. Vickery, I would love to hear, I mean, I feel like you're probably surrounded by every single cutting edge ingredient, every single cutting edge product, but I'd love to know what your beauty these days are. So I, I, de I definitely feel like I have an unfair advantage when it comes to um, fun new products. So I'm really obsessed with moisturization. I have dry skin, so that's my number one tip. When it comes to a beauty routine, I'm not really allowed to have an exact beauty routine because we're trying new products all the time. So uh, every day, I, my face might look a little bit different, whether we're, we're trying new lip colors or new um, mascaras. I would say the new molded brushes or the new rubber brushes and mascaras these days, uh, like Plumptify, are a huge change for beauty routine. Cool. I would say moisturization and the right mascara brush are really key. Good to know. And then, Vicki, don't think you're escaping over there. I see you with your beautiful wallpaper in the background. Your skin looks like ridiculously glowy and kind of like just perfect from where I'm sitting. So I want to hear your tips as well. Because you're one of those girls who's also always surrounded by products. Delicious Max Factor products, actually. So you have to tell us your secrets, too. Thank you. Well, for me, it's all about concentrating on one area. So. 
I, you know, rather just either do my eyes or my lips. I never do both. So if I go for a bold lip, I always just put mascara on and a little bit of eyebrow pencil. But I never do both areas. And I think like one of the key trends that we see on Facebook and Twitter that people are actually loving this summer is a really bold lip. And I think last year it was all about the red lip, and this year it's going into the pinks and the fuchsia. So I think that's a massive trend for us this year in the UK. And then what do you use for your skin? Does your skin, seriously, I want to know. <laughs> what else do you use for your skin? I'm actually using um, the CC cream okay. today and a little bit of powder on top. Mm -hmm. um, I'm using the 2000 calorie on my lashes mm -hmm. and the new giant pen stick on my lips. Oh, these guys, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love these. These are so good. That's actually one of my top beauty tips is because I literally am getting on an airplane in 45 minutes. Like while I'm getting in a cab to go into an airplane very, very soon. It's kind of freaking me out, actually. So these guys are always <laughs> my secret. I always have them in my bag. And in a pinch, they work really, really well for cheeks, too. And Caroline, if you can back me up, like, is it awful that I'm using these on my cheeks? Because I kind of put some on the back of my hand and I use it out and jab, jab it onto my phone. So. Is that okay, do you think? Yeah, no, absolutely. Just not the pale shade because it's got too much glitter in it and that's not going to be a good look. Stick to the subtle amber. That's fabulous. And maybe you can bash down a little bit of the vibrant pink. But um, mm. the pale, the, what's the pale shade we've got? No, no, the pink, the pale. Rose. Princess Rose, which I absolutely love, but that's definitely not for the cheeks. <laughs> kind of super, super pale, almost like frosty kind of. Kind of yes, kind of yes, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's such a high fashion color, in my opinion. Like, when I got that color, I was like, this is the perfect color for, like, a 60, like, amazing no, totally. like, fashion shoe. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, it's not, not for everyday natural. But, you know, we like to have all these trend colors coming through. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I feel like, um, Vicky, do we have any last questions coming in on Facebook, Twitter, or Google Plus? Oh, I think you're breaking up a bit. I couldn't hear what it just said. Sorry, I um, can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, there's no further questions at the minute. Okay. Well Oh, I, I had one question yeah. on Twitter. Um but asking one I couldn't answer. Um, saying, can you combine IBB with a CC? You wanted to say prime IBB and then use a CC cream, Caroline? I, you know what, I just think, I mean, of course you can. If, and, and if you find that works for you, that the BB cream gives you something extra, then, then wonderful, you found your formula. But be aware of too much product overload on your skin. You know, your poor skin's working hard and it's really trying to look young and fresh and hydrated. And if you're giving it too much, what you'll find is actually you'll get this layer of um, residue on your skin, which will almost look like dead skin cells. It will just come off on the sides of your face and it will build up on the product. So you need to make sure that your products have, one, you give your moisturizer time to settle into your skin before you put your CC cream on. Then you need to let your CC cream settle in before you put your blush on. You know, you, you need to give everything a chance and just understand how these products are working. And, you know, but as I said, if it works for you and you've got a radiant skin, then good for you. <laughs> Yay. Okay, wait, so Caroline, you just, sorry, um, um, this, but you just literally made me think of like 10 other questions. So my first one is, come on then. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. When you said that um, letting skin breathe, are there areas of the face, because one makeup artist once told me that when you're putting color products such as a foundation, like this one, the Ageless, Ageless Elixir Foundation, or a color coverage product like a CC cream, are there certain parts of the face that need less coverage such as the forehead or the cheeks or yeah no absolutely my, my advice would be to always start your foundation or CC cream around your t-zone okay so the t-zone is as, as you're a teenager you'll find that this is your oily part of your face but actually this is the area of the face where you need more coverage I lift under the dark gray areas of your eyes around your nose and cheeks and just on your chin you'll find the area of your face to the side of your cheeks and your forehead and your chin unless you are suffering from a skin problem at the current moment is actually fine so you'll get the most coverage from the product around there and you'll be able to blend it seamlessly away to nothing again giving you that really natural finish 
And then my second question is concealer. Should it go on before or after? In my book, always after. Concealer conceals. You need to see what your foundation or CC cream can do for you. Give it a chance. Allow yourself to give that lovely veil of coverage. You may not need it. Once it's settled in, then see, okay, maybe I just need a little bit on this pimple here, or my eyes are looking a little bit dark. Then you add your concealer afterwards. If you do it before, then you apply your foundation. You've already removed it, and then you've mixed your concealer into your foundation. There is no you argument on skin, that. Then, because it's nice to see your skin through, isn't it? To have the skin there, but just yeah. lightly kind of veiled with the perfecting ingredients, basically. Yeah. Yeah. But another nice trick to do is actually, you know, if you're lucky enough to have a great skin and you just want to conceal a few areas, you just put your moisturizer on and you conceal just around your nose, under your eyes, and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. And my last question, I feel so bad that I'm dominating this and throwing eight million questions at you guys, is Caroline, when people are choosing a CC cream shade for their skin, does the conventional wisdom kind of apply where, I, one of the great things I love about Max Factor um, color products. I know I'm number 75 and like everything. I'm golden and everything. I'm golden like the shade maybe. I'm not saying I'm like golden. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I, that's one of the things I love is I have all my different Max Factor foundations are the exact same shade and I know they'll go through, but should people when they're buying them in the store test it on their jaw, on their wrist, on the back of their hand? I feel like you're very conflicting advice like that. Uh, the biggest, the best advice I can give you is to actually take a little pot with you, take a little tester pot, you can get them in any chemist, any drugstore, and just take a little bit of the tester that's on the counter of Max Factor and squeeze a little bit in. Take it home and try it at home. You want to ensure that you take your foundation from the colour of your body up into your face. If you're testing it on a jaw, you might find your, le your neck is lighter and your, your chest is slightly red. You need to make sure that the whole, your whole skin tone to, it matches your body. Then everything looks natural. Mm -hmm. If your skin tone is arguing with each other, it instantly looks fake, even if the texture is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then also, again, I swear to gosh, this is my last question. <laughs> I, as you can see here in the Google Hangout, everyone has different lighting situations. So, I mean, there's fluorescent, there's light, there's everything. Is there a best light? Test out your CC cream? Yeah, not mine. <laughs> not mine because my light comes from the top. <laughs> the, best, the best way to check is to put a mirror on a windowsill, have daylight directly at your face. Get a large mirror that you can see your chest, neck, and face towards daylight. Test it there. If everything blends in beautifully and it neutralizes your skin tone so it blends in as one, that means that you have got the right color. Okay, so the, the, the daylight is shining like on your face, is what you're saying. You are in a perfect light, Eva. I am, really? You are, yeah. You're looking... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Cream and golden, plus perfect light, plus concealer after. I feel like we figured out the formula to perfect skin right now. So it's CC cream, in natural light, conceal afterwards, and then put the foundation, or, and put dust powder. Is it okay to dust some powder on? Again, it depends on your skin tone, yeah. It depends on your skin type. I, I don't like powder, that's because I'm 40 and I like my skin to look as young as I can possibly get it. Um, mm -hmm. I have a dry skin, so, but for some people with a combination of oily skin, they may need a little bit of powder, but just apply it with a tiny brush. You get powder brushes that are very, very big and chunky. They'll disperse the powder all over your face, but just be a little bit more bespoke on your application. Take a small powder brush and just dance it around the T-zone, underneath your eyes, around your nose, around your mouth. That's all you need. Let your forehead and your cheeks be natural. Great. Cool. Well, thank that you. Makes sense. Sense. That makes total sense. My brain is swimming right now from all the great advice. I'm like, I have to tweet this. I have to tweet that. So we go furiously jot some notes down right now. But if anyone else has any further questions and, or any comments that they want to chime in with? All right. Well, thank you guys all so much for joining. I feel like we answered a lot of questions that we've gotten about some teams. And I'm sure after this, there'll be some follow up questions. Still, I'm too shy to chime in. So, thank you all, and have a great day. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs>